Hey, glad you're all here. Hopefully you are anyways. Uh, I'm Lionel. Obviously, we got Robert sitting with us here, too. Uh, ooh, it's been a heck of a last <laughs> few days. Well, apparently, we were wrong about some predictions. I'm just going to say we made some prediction last week. In regards to hockey, I made some comments about how the Jets didn't stand a chance. Of... <laughs> the Jets are out. Preds are still in. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on that too much. Uh, we're going to do the old cliche. There's always <laughs> next year. Uh, I hope that Shifley can win a couple of golf tournaments in the summer. Uh, and whoever likes to fish will enjoy some good fishing. Thankfully, the Preds are still in. I'm going to be rooting for the Preds, by the way, Robert. I'm going to root for them all the way. Uh, well, I appreciate that. If, if the roles were reversed, I would be doing the same. <laughs> yeah, but it's not just because we're friends. It's it's. I legitimately actually like the Preds. Yeah, I do think I that they deserve to win a cup from years ago when they should have, uh, if it wasn't for the Jets, <laughs> but, uh, who didn't win either. But that said, they're still going strong, so good, good luck to them. But... One thing I think we need to talk about right now, well, not need to, I would like to, is uh, because we have a new team coming in, uh, the, uh, what were they again? Uh, the the Utah, uh, they mentioned a few names. I think you're laughing already. <laughs> the, the Utah Elrons, please don't anybody <laughs> come after me on that one. <laughs> that would be cool if they called them that, you know, <laughs> the Elrons. Anyways, um so with them coming in, there's going to be a little, you know, a few adjustments here and there, obviously. And we were discussing between us last week uh, for, for a while about uh, what some of those adjustments might end up being. And we don't know exactly everything that's going to happen. There should be meetings soon or sometime in the summer anyways, uh, and press releases about it. But we thought we'd talk about what's the best thing that we could come up if we were going to do it. And how was it done in the past when they had new teams? Also, playoff formats. Um, some people are happy with the playoff format. Some people think it should go back the way it was. Some people don't realize the way it was. I don't mean 10 years ago. But back in the 80s, the playoff structure was something they felt they had to change. I loved it. So anyways, Robert, what do you think okay. about all of that? Where should we start? Okay, so actually, I would like you to... Um... Give us an overall picture of how the playoff picture was in the 80s. Because I didn't start following hockey until 89 when the Preds came to Nashville. So prior to that, I don't really have much experience. So do you think it was better than or worse than? Is that what you're saying? I thought it was better. But the, the here's where the problem was and why things had to change. Now, it wasn't like that for an awfully long period of time. People forget because there had been a few expansions. I mean, in 1967, there were six teams in the league, right? By the time the Winnipeg Jets were a thing, there were 19 teams. And then all of a sudden, there were 21. And I'm talking about at a time when there was 20 and 21 teams. I think Florida was one of the first of those new expansion era teams, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Dallas was not an expansion team, if anybody's wondering that. Uh, anybody, because there's a lot of young people that might not realize they came from Minnesota. They, they moved, they relocated. Yeah. Um, so uh, in any case, the way it worked was there were, of course, two conferences like there are now. There were four divisions like there are now, but there were also only five teams in all, but I think one division and then, and then there was an expansion team in six and one. But four teams uh, made it into the playoffs from each division. So if you had, or sorry, six teams in each division. Wait, can I count right? No, five and five and then six and six. Does that come out? That comes up to 22 teams. I, I can't count. <laughs> it, 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 I was thinking when it was 21. So, yeah, three divisions had five. I was right the first time. And one had six. That's 21. Is that correct? Right. Yes. But here's the thing. There were no wild cards. Four teams from each division made the playoffs. That's right. One team or two in that one division didn't make it. Now, don't get me wrong. If we did the same thing with as many teams, it should still be the same amount of teams from each division. Um, so there would be more teams that didn't make it, not more teams that did make it. Right. Uh, because I do think 16 teams making the playoffs is fair. Robert is going to discuss with you why there's a possibly, depending on who you talk to, better idea, or at least an option um, that would work differently. But anyway, so out of those uh, 16 teams, or four teams per division, the first place in each division would play the last place in each division, and second and third would play each other, 
and then the winner of each of those would play each other, and then the winner of the divisions would play the conference final and onto the Stanley Cup. Problem that they had was that it was often that Calgary, Winnipeg, and Edmonton would finish one, two, and three, or one, two, and four, or one, three, and four in the entire conference, sometimes the league, every year. The other team, the other, the other, uh, sorry, other team in, in the division would often be like 19th place out of 21 in the league. But, <laughs> you know, as the only, as two, the two worst teams in the league might be in the same, in the same division, but right. they're behind the three best. So four teams from each division and the fourth team, the fifth team on the other division is far better than the fourth team in our division. And it happened more often than not in the Smythe division, having a team that shouldn't have made the playoffs more often than not. Um, and I, I don't remember the name of all the divisions, the Smythe, the Norris, the Patrick, and I can't remember the other one. Uh, Norris and Patrick were Eastern Conference and Smythe and whatever the other one was, Wales. Wales, I think. Yeah, see, that was way before my time. I don't remember any of that. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> way before my hockey time. Let me put it that way. Well, keep in mind that, this, that the All-Star game was also East and West all the time. So it was it was the, or sorry, Wales was the conference maybe. <laughs> see, it's been so long ago, I'm actually starting to forget. But anyways, the bottom line is that most of the time, though, that wasn't necessarily the case. And you played most of your games in your own division. So you had 80 games then, not 82. 40 of those games were played in your own bloody division. 20 more were played against the other division and only 20 were played in the other conference combined. Hmm. Yeah. Why for the love of Pete, would they think that it's unfair for the one team that didn't do well against their own division? If you don't do well enough to play a playoff game against your own division, then you shouldn't be in. I don't right. like conference playoffs. I like divisional playoffs. Because you have to play to get out of your division. And I think that's the best way to do it. Play most of your games against your division. Play the other games because you need to get people to, in asses in the seats and people watching on TV. Everybody wants to see, uh, I was going to say Wayne Gretzky. <laughs> I'm still in the 80s. Uh, everybody wants to see Conor McGregor against, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Conor McGregor? Who's Conor McGregor? Conor McGregor. <laughs> Wow, you mean McDavid? Everybody, <laughs> everybody, sorry, but don't get all okay. right. Okay, all right. Let me, let me, let me, let me just say this. Maybe people wanted to see Conor McGregor against Dustin Bufflin. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why I said Conor McGregor. Conor McDavid. All that, all these Scottish names are coming at me. Right, Conor McDavid. <laughs> Thank you for catching that and making that ass of the end. Well, I, I did it to myself. Well, I thought I was like, is he talking about somebody that's like from eighties that I don't know? Because I. Had... Oh. <laughs> Okay. I, I could tell you this much. If I was playing hockey and Conor McGregor was coming at me full speed ahead, I would put the stick down, tuck my head between my legs and pray that Dustin Bufflin was on my team to protect me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> let's be realistic. Okay, so that's basically it. So today's, um, we all, all know how it works today. So let's talk about what a potential plan might be or what some people are proposing that you know a little bit more about and you can well i i'm going to reference this article because i it, it's a That's little fine. confusing uh but and it's um I'm, I'm still curious though because even though we have a new team it's not really a new team they're relocating from arizona to utah and yeah. Arizona does not have a team yet. Now they are going to try to get another one, which whatever. So technically it's still the same number of teams. It's, we're not adding any more teams. Although there are some other cities that are trying to get expansion bids. So who knows? I mean, you know, it's topsy turvy for sure. Um, but even Bettman in this article was talking where, you know, he's considered an align a realignment. I think it's kind of wacky the way it is myself too at, at the moment. Um, so I'm just going to lay out how they have it laid out here. And then we'll kind of talk about it. So that the Eastern conference proposed division one in the Eastern conference, four teams, Bruins, Devils, Islanders, Rangers. Okay. That makes sense. Division yeah, two. 
Uh, Division two is Sabres, Canadians, Senators, and the Leafs. Again, that's makes perfect sense. for rivalry. I, I agree with that too. Uh, Division three, same conference, is Blue Jackets, Flyers, Penguins, and Capitals. See, the that's, Blue that's, that's, the only, that's the only division that I heard so far where only the people from that area is going to care about them. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, 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 go, go on. I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, see, to me, the Blue Jackets are, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's a fit. But, you know, again, I, they didn't ask me. Uh, division four is the Well, Hurricanes, they're from that area. Panthers. So, Well, I understand. I understand. So Division 4 is the Hurricanes, Panthers, Predators, and Lightning. Again, that makes sense. Yes, it does. It said Lightning are a little further off, but sure, why but not? But keep in mind that the Predators moved from Western Conference to Eastern Conference in this lineup. Right now, we're in the Western Conference. Oh, yeah. that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But again, see, you, yeah. in the Western Conference makes no sense because we're not – we're – much further east than we are west but no 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 that, that is true i mean technically you're kind of sort of almost middle but then again yeah. if i if i were able to drive directly south without running into two lakes actually more than two but two great lakes then i could drive almost directly to your house from here driving almost due south so yeah, yeah i agree you're way more east than you are west and there's and here comes up in the west so yeah here comes another confusing thing though so now we're in the western conference Division five, technically division one in that conference, Blackhawks, Red Wings, Wild, and Blues. That to me doesn't make sense. Wait, say the say the, sorry, Blackhawks, Red Wings, Wild, and Blues. Blues. Blackhawks, Red Wings. The Black Hawks very, close, under- very close together. Wild is Minnesota, makes sense. And St. Louis. No, that's it's a little further. But see, there's good. This is where we get into the point where the teams are going to be further apart. Um, and it's just natural. However, interestingly enough, oh, it would be hard to make a change because you'd have to put somebody else further away again. And I'm only mentioning that because as you get into where Winnipeg sits, you can see that they 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 do have the disadvantage. And but the thing is, it it won't be as much of a disadvantage for Winnipeg if they go to this new format because again nearly half the games will be played in their own division. Yeah. So it kind of makes sense. Well, okay. So, well, let's finish the divisions out. So Divi- uh, division six, technically two in the West is Avalanche stars, Utah, formerly Arizona Coyotes, and the Knights. Again, that makes total sense to me. Sure. And then d- division seven is the Flames, Oilers, Canucks, and Jets, all Canadian teams. Now, you see where my problem is, right? Well, three, yeah, just Vancouver a minute, three, three, hang on a second. Three Canadian teams in the East, one division. Four Canadian teams in the West, one division. Where the problem is, is that uh, it could be extremely easy uh, to 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 not be able to make it. I mean, it, it, it's like it's bad enough that Canadian teams have been able to get to, to win the Stanley Cup for seventeen thousand years. Nineteen ninety three, actually, <laughs> I think it was what Montreal Canadiens won. If I'm not mistaken, that was the year. Um, Leafs. What's that? They won, they, the Leafs haven't won a cup in nineteen thousand years. Who, uh, who cares about them? <laughs> I'm talking about all Canadian teams combined. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of people hate me today. Okay, um, no, the, the, the Winnipeg has a has a hard enough problem. Here's what I would honestly, literally like to see: literally just change two of those, swap two of those teams, one team from the east, one team from the west. Uh, for instance, uh, I understand the Montreal Toronto rivalry has to continue, so that's fine. So move Ottawa and swap them with somebody like Boston or whatever, simply to make sure that there's another opportunity for a Canadian team to do something. Um, Take Vancouver and swap it with Seattle. That's it. So That's all they got to do. They're close enough together. It shouldn't make any difference whatsoever, except, of course, in the travel arrangements. But that's going to happen all year long anyways. So, yeah, the last division is Ducks, Kings, Sharks, Kraken again. 
that all makes sense. That's all completely again. Sense. Yes, but if Vancouver instead of Kraken, so what would, here's what, a here's what they problem. said in this article. He says, um, "This is the writer speaking. This is one configuration that's going to generate a lot of discussion. It's yes, an all it Canadian is. division that lumps Winnipeg in the mix with Western Canadian counterparts." But they said that um, it's about the same distance that the Jets travel currently to face Dallas in the Central Division. Yes, that's what and we were these talking four about teams were all together in the Smythe Division back in the day. So it seems yes. fit, fitting to give Winnipeg some natural rivals. That makes sense. A hundred percent agree with that. But again, what I'm saying is swap Vancouver with Seattle. Vancouver has zero rivalry with Winnipeg. They have not that much of a rivalry with Edmonton or Calgary who are rivals with each other. Winnipeg has huge rivalries with Edmonton and Calgary because they've been beaten millions of times by Edmonton Oilers and they've beaten Calgary millions of times. They have, and they've beaten each other millions of times. Um, so swap Calgary with uh, um, Seattle. The distance oh. traveled is only about 150 miles in total by air. So, so it's not, interesting you say yeah. this. So this, let me tell you what he says. The the writer says in order to put Winnipeg in that division above, we had to split apart Seattle and Vancouver, and maybe that would be a non-starter for a lot of fans who want to see the geographic rivalry blossom. Makes sense. That in geographic order, rivalry is never going to blossom. Who cares? But in order to make this all work out, there are a couple of little sacrifices to be made. Splitting up the Kraken and Canucks is one of them. Considering the Kraken have only played two seasons, it's not like we're detonating decades of a heated and bitter yes, rivalry. Yes, okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. The, again, point yeah. made, but yeah. there, that's a non-point. There, there's absolutely nothing was said in that portion of the article. I love the rest of the article, but that point wasn't even, it didn't even need to be made. It, it, there's nothing there. And that is, again, my point. Right. Move Vancouver over there. Vancouver's long-standing rivalry with teams like Los Angeles and San Jose are mm -hmm. way more in the legendary case. Remember, Vancouver's been in the league since the 1970s, right? right? Uh, they are the first Canadian expansion team. They've been around for a long time. And unbeknownst to people who don't realize because they haven't been watching that long, did you know that Vancouver went to the Stanley Cup? They didn't win. Yeah, I knew they went they once. They did, yes. and they yeah. did it at a time when they were thought to be consistently one of the worst teams in the league, and they had one half-decent season, and then they just went on a tear at the end and through the playoffs, made it all the way and lost. But Jets haven't yeah. done that yet, <laughs> right? So the bottom line is is that they, 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 they've had lots of heated play against those coastal teams. So keep them on the coast. Let them have that rivalry down the coast. It makes perfect sense. This way, we have another team, Seattle, who's not that's new and hasn't built all that yet, but they can start playing and getting rivalries with the legendary teams, Edmonton and Calgary, you know, and then yeah. Winnipeg by default <laughs> gets to get in on that action. But it also means that you have at least one Canadian team in every or sorry in four of the six divisions and i think it's absolutely absurd we have seven teams and they want to put and they're sorry talking about the idea of putting them in one or sorry two divisions it just doesn't yeah. make any sense to me because here's the thing when it comes to the playoffs when you get down to the end of it if you've got six divisions that means somewhere along the line three of those divisions are out of the playoffs before the last round like yeah. every single team from three divisions are gone this is so, just these particular writers. Like, yes. Yeah. But here's the like, thing. When idea. they write that kind of stuff, they know that there's possibilities. This is something that won't get done next year because it's way too big of a thing for yeah. one year. If it does get discussed, it'll be the year after that or the year after that. Probably. But I could see it being possible. But here's my point. If we go back to fully divisional uh, a playoff format, and we still have four divisions, two conferences, just like we do now. Keep the divisions as they are, so on, right? Um, but the difference is, is that you only play out of your own division to move on. And they could 
possibly consider just doing the wild card spots within the division. So you could have two teams play for a wild card spot in your division, single game wild card playoff. And then those two teams from the each of the two divisions play a single team wild card. A single team, single game wild card as well. So it'd be basically two games that would decide out of four who gets to have the wild card spot. You know, you're not competing with everybody. You're only competing with yourself and in your division. And then you get one chance to move on. And if you win, you get one chance to make the playoffs officially. This, by the way, is basically how baseball has survived for well over a hundred years, <laughs> except with many less teams in the playoffs. But you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. So now that we have the structure let me tell you how they have the schedule format laid out, and it might kind of tie into what you're saying. Okay. Um, so, let's see. You play teams within your own division six times, three home, three road. You will face each other, each other opponent in the league at least twice, one home, one road. The fact that every team in NHL plays each other at home and on the road seems important ensuring fans the opportunity to see Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, or McGregor, and Austin Matthews in their home city every year. Okay. Okay. If fans would like a more detailed version of how the schedule laid out, uh, let's use the New York Islanders as our example. New York would play the three teams in its own division six times, 18 games total. Three home, three road. They would play one other Eastern Conference division team four times each. 16 games total, two home, two road. They would play the remaining six divisions in the league two times each. 48 One games home total. and one road. One home, one road. So basically almost exactly the same as it was in the 1980s, except with more divisions. So this is what they, that is the only part about it that I like. Um, I, I would, uh, I, again, I would think that my idea would be better because more teams would have an opportunity. You actually let me have finish. Like let me, let me finish this real quick. Cause I think it's going to, again, tie into what you're saying. I just was reading this right here. So, and this is where we maybe kind of click to it is that it talks about the NFL and how they do it. It says, just like the NFL does with out of conference games, the NHL can employ a three year rotation for which division you play the extra games against or the Islanders it would shake out like this. Islanders play four games against Buffalo, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto division. Year two, Islanders play four games against Columbus, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, Washington. Year three, they play um, Carolina, Florida, Nashville. Which Tampa, becomes then, obvious at this point Michigan. after you said the first thing. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It really, it really, but, you need to read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, uh, again, uh, the format idea for that is fine, but it still leaves you in the same boat. Like no matter how you slice it, it still means that seven Canadian teams could be ousted within minutes of the playoffs starting. It doesn't seem right to me. And it's not, it's ridiculous because why, why limit it say like that? I think, like I said, have more, give more teams an opportunity, go back to the playoff format the way it was before get rid of the of the wild card as we know it and just have whatever teams in their division the two teams that finish out of the playoffs the next two teams like how many teams how many teams are there in our division right now i've lost count they keep expanding the league. well it's, it's 16 <laughs> isn't it in our division oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> well then it would be yeah i guess it'd be eight eight okay so let's say uh you got your top four teams right? Um, whatever teams they are. And then the next two teams are obviously going to be Winnipeg and Predators. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little down about it, but hey, anyways. Uh, uh, so, okay. So you got your top four teams in our division in the, whatever the division is, right? Uh, and then uh, the next four teams there in that division would normally be out unless there was a play, unless there were a wild card team, right? Get rid of the wild card part. And you have the next two teams play each other one game for the right to have a one game playoff with this with the opposing team in the conference going through the same thing. And then you have 
said wild card spot if you need to sorry i meant three teams and then the two um that way you actually do give more than just the two wild card teams a chance but you still have your 16 teams so that was regular season that wasn't playoff format yeah i get that i know it was regular season but okay they go into a whole playoff matter. format scenario Oh, their whole playoff format scenario, but to, please don't read it. Just synopsis. Well, I'm not going to read the whole thing. So, I mean, I, I it to you, so you understand that, you know, what they're trying to say. I mean, just get Gemini to give you the pool points. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> their playoff format is, is format is, is what then? Because, I mean, you're talking about three divisions each conference. So, who doesn't make it? Well, it just says um, all eight division winners would automatically receive playoff berths. Of course, blah blah blah. All eight. Next, all eight division winners. Wait a minute. I thought there were six bloody divisions. No, there's four in each. There's four divisions of four, four eight, in each conference. Six, oh, sorry, I counted wrong. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I'm sorry. Math is hard. It's a, theme. It. it's a theme day. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> the next four teams with the best records in each conference also qualify in the ideal world. The teams would be seated from one through 16 from the entire league, blah, blah, blah. Um, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Step back. But, but since that seems like a non-starter for the NHL, at least a return to a one through eight in each conference could be a nice alternative. Now, one through eight isn't bad, but again, I fucking hate. Why do you play in a division and then go one through eight in the conference? It makes no sense. I beat your team. My, not me personally. You know what I mean? My team beats your team four times out of six. Uh, finishes first in the or second in the in, in the in 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 the division, but sixth in the conference. And I got next to no chance to move on because I have to play the second best team in the league or third best, whatever, uh, right off the bat. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. You need to play out of your division before you play through your conference. I, I don't know why everybody's coming up with this. Sorry, it bugs me. It bugs me because honestly, the best team to win the Stanley Cup in back in its day was always the best team to win the Stanley cup. The two teams that went to the Stanley cup in those days were the two best teams that should be there. And that's because they didn't have to play some team that shouldn't be there. That got lucky in seven games because they played them hard only to lose to a team that would have lost to the other team. It's like Winnipeg playing uh, Vegas in 2018. Vegas went all the way to the cup. They didn't win. They had no chance. Um, they honestly shouldn't have been there. And I'm not joking. Uh, I think to this day that had the Predators won that series against Winnipeg, they would have won. I think if Winnipeg did get past Vegas, they would have won the cup. And that's just a, that's a piss poor example compared to some other ones. Uh, we've seen other teams. Dallas should not have had a shot at going to the playoffs on that stupid wild card spot that they had. I say that and I'm still rooting. Well, for the one thing they point out is I'm being a little two faced here. But anyway. One point they make is that they could have one small caveat where if the third place teams within five points of the second place team at the end of the regular season, they will have a mini play in series to determine who gets the final playoff spot. Wait, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I, now I have to have you repeat that one. I, I think I missed that because you didn't listen. It, well, no, just I need you to say it again, please. It says the top two teams in each of the eight division advance to the playoffs. We could have one small caveat where if the third place team is within five points of the second place team at the end of the regular season, it will have a mini play in series to determine who gets the final playoff spot. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. If I beat your ass by five points at the end of the season, which is three full fucking games, two games and an overtime loss, by the way, meaning you lost three times more than I did, then why the hell should you get a chance to accidentally beat me because you ran my goalie over and knocked him out in the first period, hit my, hit my, my top goal scorer in the throat with a slap shot, and then the other guy beat one of my guys down. And so I've, I'm out a defenseman, a forward, and a goaltender. And you walk in yeah, and go, well, hey, I get the playoff spot now because I beat you. Well, again, 
as he states. No. This is a super broad stroke overview of yeah, his the, idea of what it could be. So you're you're getting yourself all upset for absolutely yeah, they're, they're over you know, I'm Canadian. <laughs> the, 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 okay. the, listen. Oh, broad stroke overview is broadly over no. That's you know what? Who wrote it? No, don't say the name. Don't say the name. But you do need to cite it because you're reading from it. So just the article, but not the name. No, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't have to cite. It's it's from the athletic. It's one of the athletic. Articles. Oh, that's why paywall. <laughs> it's paywall. That's right. I forgot. Okay. Uh, no, I don't. I, yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, uh, you know what? In comparison, let's just put it this way. The old style or or the old way, uh, my version of how it would have worked, the Predators uh, would have been in the playoffs anyways without a wild card spot. The, who would you have played? Who finished first in our division again? Um, I oh, that was Dallas, wasn't it? Well, yeah, Dallas and Canucks in the conference finished first in each division. Okay, okay so, so that means you would have played Dallas. Um, I think they would have stood a chance, to be honest with you. But it would have been a fair matchup, without question, because first and against last in the division, it would have been a perfectly fair matchup. Uh, Winnipeg would have played. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> actually, it would have been the Avalanche, wouldn't it? They, there are in our division, right? Yes. I don't remember who's in whose division anymore because they moved teams around. <laughs> but so they would have they would have got knocked out anyways. Jets would have been knocked out anyway. So that would have been no different in, in that respect. Uh, however, who would Edmonton have played? That's the question. They would have yeah. played Vancouver. Yeah, it would have been Edmonton and Vancouver. That would have been an interesting series. I would have liked to have seen that, to be honest with you. Would have been huge ratings in Canada for that. Well, I, I can honestly say that I... I personally completely underestimated the matchup between us and the Canucks. I, I thought it was going to be a much better matchup than it actually was, honestly. Um, I, I think the yeah. Canucks are playing much better than I anticipated them playing over the long haul. So well, even, with their, even with their third string goalie in, he's doing a really great job. I mean, the next is Zamboni driver. So, I mean, <laughs> but, but listen, you, you got to remember though, your team is doing better than you thought they would. You didn't think they would be down only one game after five. Did you? We lost two games where we had two goal leads with two minutes left at the Again, end of the third. And you lost. didn't think your team Please. would be down by only one game after five, Please. did you? You thought they were going to get swept or lose four games to one. You were sure of it. You've been saying it since before the playoffs started. Because I think they still got a chance. I've said Stanley. this before. Wait, wait, wait. I wait, said this before. Uh, the road to the Stanley Cup goes through Nashville. No. And now you might think that's ridiculous, but keep in mind, even if Vancouver beats Nashville and doesn't win, whoever they play, they will probably take seven games and force them to have to still technically be suffering the remnants of Nashville. I'm telling you, the road to the Stanley Cup from the West, that is, goes through Nashville. I think Nashville has a chance to pull it off. And, and you remember anybody what I who said at the beginning of all this, the very first podcast we did about hockey, what I said was, consistency consistency is going to be their undenying failure in how they're going to be eliminated as they won the last night and they have not been consistent they can just because they won, keep winning games the jets they have would not lose been consistent and yet they won it doesn't matter but they keep winning <laughs> okay. one more loss they're out one more win and they're still in I can, listen, two, I can talk to Seuss with the best of them. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> One more win and you're in. Okay. All right. So we, <laughs> we, we can go on about that for an hour and a half by itself. Um, here's the thing. I really can't wait until both of our teams are good so we can have that fun, friendly rivalry about whose team is better rather than whose team is worse. <laughs> it's less fun. Um, having said that, 
So, okay. In regards to uh, the playoff format and changing it, I, I've, I've made my piece. I want to know what your opinion is, what you think, if you have an idea of how you would like to see it change or if you think it's perfectly fine the way it is. Well, I don't really have an idea because that's above my pay grade. <laughs> There's a lot of confusing things in creating divisions and conferences. So, and then, you know, you have all the people, you know, these people, teams moving around. Uh, they say in a couple of years, Arizona is probably going to have another team back in um, Tempe or who knows? They might play at a high school hockey rink next time. I don't know. Yeah. You know, as, a, but- <laughs> as opposed to, as opposed to Quebec city, getting into a team again. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Right, right, right. So you know what I think they should do? I I, I think they should put a team in St. Paul, Minnesota. <laughs> Natural rivalry for both the Jets and the Wild. Wild uh-huh. and the Jets and and the St. Paul Pirates. I know that didn't work. St. Paul what starts with P? <laughs> I have no idea what to name that. That's not St. Paul yeah. Pole Vaulters. No, I'm <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously, but it's just here. Okay. You know what? Okay. We can move on from that entirely. Let's, let's, let's. Well, one thing I do want to make a point though, is and not necessarily as a playoff structure, but as far as what I think needs to change in general in hockey, as far as overtime, because that needs to be changed more so in my opinion than the playoff format, because I really think they needed to get rid of the, um, you know, shootout i think they need to stick to a actual you know what if you want to go to overtime you're going to play whether it be three on three or five on five you play that until somebody scores you, you know what i i don't i don't have a hard time with the three on three part because it just guarantee that doesn't guarantee but it gives you a better opportunity somebody's going to score and that's what they're looking for it's not going to be a five hour game right yeah so just do your five minute overtime three on three sure um, I actually, to be honest with you, would like to see a four on four. It's still not five. There's still less players than five, so there's a better chance of winning. Uh, three on three is fine, though. But um, I agree. Get rid of the shootout. It's all oh, people love it. It's exciting. Problem is, is you're giving teams a victory that didn't win. It's so ridiculously not fair. And the other problem is that there's no distinction in losses. Well, I mean, there is in the RO, ROW part to yeah. a point. To a point, but it really only distinguishes regulation win versus overtime or shootout. So it's not a distinction in that. I don't like area. the loser point. Get rid of the loser point. That's what if I'm you saying. Win, you get your, That's what I'm saying. I'm Here's the thing. I, exactly. Here's the thing. In the old days, and you might remember this because it was like that when you first got your team. Yes. Uh, you won, you lost in overtime. You did not get a point. If you won in overtime, you only got one point. Because you had to go to overtime. So you got a single point. So people wonder, well, how come so many teams are getting 106 points? You can't get into the playoffs unless you get 99 points this year. Well, that's because every team, I mean, look at Boston. For the love of God, I agree that they didn't have a lot of regulation losses. But the fact of the matter is they had something like 16 or 17 overtime slash shootout losses. Are you freaking kidding me? If this was the old days, Boston would barely have made the playoffs. Right. As good a team as they are, they barely would have even squeaked in. They only, yeah, but- they had like eight wins less than some other. I mean, and they have an exaggerating. It's not quite that bad. But, but they, it, it, it's a participation point, which is complete crap. Yeah, let's give everybody the trophy. I understand if you're 10 years old, that makes sense. But Even these guys are making old. millions of dollars. They're not. This isn't a yeah. schoolyard. You know, yeah. Take your stupid little, you know, the thumb high trophy. <laughs> Go away. Like this is the way it's supposed to be. You lose, you get nothing. Don't reward <laughs> failure. You know. And like uh, I said, they're they're making. A, a, this is not a charity for them. This is not a. They're. This is their job. I go to work every day. I do my job. They go to work every day. They do their job. Their job is how right. to be hockey. Right. I don't go into work and do terrible. And they go, oh, you know what? I'm just going to give you an extra $10 because, you know, you would have got 20 if you did a better job, but you only get 10 because you sucked. 
Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. That I, doesn't I, happen. <laughs> you know. Walk, no. You're in the hospital. Doctor says you've got an operable cancer. But I'll tell you what, I'll throw you an extra kidney just for shits and giggles. Yeah, yeah. It so, doesn't make any sense, okay? I think that needs to change before the playoffs. It does. Right? It does. You can't you can't do that. Um yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I, I don't like it at all. I've never liked it, to be honest. When they first introduced it, I said, What? Why would you get a point for losing? And so oh, we're gonna do a shootout. Okay, so you don't get anything if you lose the shootout. Now, there, there is an alternative to this. Don't give any points if you lose in a shootout. The, now, their argument, of course, is if you made it that far, you deserve something. Again, that's a participation point, like you're saying. Yeah. So you, you the, the alternative is you can keep it the same, but losing the shootout gets you nothing. Winning the shootout gets you one point. Winning in overtime gets you one point or two points. Losing in overtime gets you nothing. Right. <laughs> Winning regulation. No, I, you know what? Screw the shootout. Let's just talk about how it should be. No shootout. You lose in overtime, you get nothing. Yeah. You win in overtime, you get one point. You win in regulation, you get three. Bob's your uncle. And it's going to stop these teams that realize they're getting to the end of the third period and they stretch it out just to get that point. They exactly. really play for the point. Yeah, p- that, teams are again, teams are actually yeah. tanking themselves. That's like that, that. It's like any other sport where where you know that you don't have to win, and you just don't give a shit, and you're shortchanging fans who are paying hundreds of dollars to sit down and watch you play. It yeah. uh, you know it, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, I don't think it's right. I think they, they should get rid of it. Get rid of the overtime. No points. Or sorry, the overtime. Get rid of the shootout. One point for winning overtime, zero for not, and three points for for winning regulation. Why not? Why not? I mean, they have never done the three-point thing. Every other team in every other league has probably either gone to it or experimented with or at least talked about it, right? I'm pretty sure. How does it work? Most leagues are doing three-point things now, aren't they? You you have soccer. You have soccer that does you get three points for a win if you go into overtime you get two you get if you win if you win and one if you lose right so they split them they don't add points like the nhl you know what it is that that's also fine but here's where i don't like it you could be a team that goes on a tear at the beginning of the season you end up losing in regulation Six games in a row, you win three, lose five in a row, and then you go on a tear at the end of the season. But those nine games or that you didn't, or whatever it is, I just said 11 games, that you didn't win, that you should have won at least half of, puts you either out of the playoffs or in a really bad playoff position because you got no extra point. Meanwhile, some other team hasn't been able to put together 20 wins the entire season, but they have 26 overtime losses. Yeah. And they make the playoffs a, a point ahead of you in the standings. Yeah. I don't like that either. So I honestly yeah. am a huge advocate for you lose, you get nothing. Yeah. Nothing. That's what I think. Uh, and yes, that means the Jets would have had six or whatever times, seven times where they got nothing. But compared to Boston, that's pretty good. The Jets had very few overtime losses. They didn't go to overtime that many times. Right. Um, and they did win more times than they lost. But they gave other teams when they did lose, you know, points that they deserved. But the Jets ended up getting points that I don't think they deserved. So I, I do, I do think so. I, 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 while while the three two one is nice, I still think that it gives too many opportunities. That works in a in a league where you don't have as many teams making the playoffs because then you you use every single point you can to go up the ladder, right? So, but um, for something like the NHL, I would like to see two points. And nothing, or two points, one point, and nothing, or three points and two points. Uh, and if they did do the one point, it would have to be something like they did two overtimes. Yeah. If you won, yeah, so. if you lost in the first overtime, get a point. If you if you get to the second overtime and lose, you don't get anything. And now that yeah. sounds stupid, but you know it would be five minutes, to, uh, and and then and then and then and then you would take a two minute break and switch sides. Yeah, five minutes again. That's similar to football, by the way. Well, you are—you should know. You already know that. 
you know, yeah. overtimes might be a little different in, in, in Canadian football. You know what? Let me ask that question just for shits and giggles. Since football season will be starting for Canada in the next month and a half. <laughs> yeah. Well, sorry. <clears throat> Not the season, but, you know, the, the yeah. camp. Yeah. Um, how is your overtime work in NFL? Well, they used to not allow a tie, but now they do. So the tie obviously figures into – they don't have a point system, so you don't get 1.2 point, 2 point, 3 point. There's no points. It's either win or loss. And now tie. So a tie contributes to your overall ranking at the end of the season. Oh, so but wait again, a minute. I don't like ties. I don't want a tie. I want to win. Yeah, no, no, I agree. Them. I agree. So wait a minute. Hang on a second. Um, if you're saying they don't do points, is it, do you mean that they, they do it similar to baseball in a percentage system? So you're like, uh, your winning percentage is 638 versus the next guy's 525, right? Yeah, it's like you know, you finished 500, you finished 600, you finished you know, right, perfect right. season. Yeah, there's no points. It's yeah, yeah, of course. I, I oddly though, for the amount of games that football plays, there's no difference between that. And, play, and 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 actual points <laughs> it would still work out exactly the same well, way as long yeah. as you don't factor in ties that is uh the cfl doesn't do ties but what, what i meant to, what i was asking about was how does the actual overtime actually work in when it comes to scoring like how do you do it i'll, oh, I'll, give, okay. I'll just give you a brief overview here of, of of cfl what the cfl does is it does uh uh just by possession first to score but you always get the first, uh, the second team gets their chance, of course, right? So, uh, say the Bombers are playing the Argonauts. Uh, bombers only make it a, make it a field goal. That's all they can muster up in their in their time on the field. And by the way, they start from like the other team's forty yard line or some shit. So it's not like they got a long way to go. <laughs> they like one play, kick a field goal. <laughs> you know, that's pretty yeah. much it. Anyways, uh, so if they get that field goal, the other team's like, oh, well, I can get it with more than a field goal. Uh, and you don't get a play after none of that mumble jumble. You have to just go for your play, right? So they would go for a touchdown. If they only get a field goal, they actually continue. But then if the Bombers get a field goal or a touchdown or even a single point, they win. There's no, you get another chance. Wait, 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 wait. I, mean, I think I'm confused here. So you don't have three or four downs in overtime? Well, no, you do. <laughs> oh, I mean, you I'm said talking, you get one shot. I thought you were like one okay. shot, as in, as in, it's basically oh, okay. first to score wins. First, first past the post, if you will. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were saying that you only like okay, you get the ball and you get. <laughs> no, it's like it's like how Canadians <laughs> go to the polls first past the post, which is what Americans should be doing. First past the post, first past the post would put yeah. somebody out quickly. Anyways. Um, no, it, uh, yeah, so they, they have their three downs, right? So first down, they get a first down. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, second down, they don't get a first down, but they get six yards. And they're like, all right, well, we're close enough for a field goal. Let's just do that and play good defense. They do that. Next team has their chance. They do the exact same thing, but they get a touchdown. That team wins. They don't do it, and they get a field goal. Then the Bombers would go back out. They get their chance. Uh, difference is if the Bombers score that field goal or touchdown, the other team does not get a chance. At least yeah. that's what I remember. They may have changed that in the last few years. So if anybody well, that's similar this now and says I'm wrong, been. I listen to you because I could be wrong. Where, where do you start your um, – Let me just – uh, Let me just uh, – On the field. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let, you know what? Let me go, let me go to Jim and I and, and ask. I didn't know if they, I can't remember. What yard line do you start at when starting overtime in CFL? It's actually answering quicker now that the uh, app has been updated again. Uh, in CFL overtime, each team starts their possession at the opponent's. <laughs> at the opponent's 35 yard line. <laughs> So they could technically just kick a field goal and it's over. <laughs> if the other team doesn't get to do anything, like it's hard. But you know what? It's harder than you think. It's actually easier to block a field goal in the CFL than it is in the NFL. And you know why that is, right? Mm -hmm. Because we have a full yard in between the offense, offensive line and the defensive line. 
you guys don't have but maybe an inch at best. I mean, fingertips practically touch between the center line, the center O-man and the, and the defense. Yes. So yeah, they're, they're, um, they're, it's much harder to, for a guy to get in and around on that. But when you've got a full uh, yard to work to work around, that's that's a huge huge difference for just bouncing off somebody running around and and uh, and blocking a field goal. There are an unruly amount of field goal blocks in the CFL every year. It's kind of funny, actually. Uh, yeah, so they they changed team. the rules again a little bit. So for twenty twenty four regular season. Games that are tied after four quarters of regulation will enter a 10-minute overtime period. Overtime begins at a coin toss to be determined who gets the ball first. Each team will have the opportunity to possess the ball unless the team that gets the ball first scores a touchdown on the opening possession, sudden death play, where in the game ends on any score, safety, field goal, or touchdown continues until winner is decided. So that's different. They change that. Yeah. Yeah. So just out of curiosity, would you ever want to see now a lot of people laugh at this because they don't think it makes any sense and in, 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 in many ways it doesn't. But would you ever want to see like um an exhibition game between top CFL team and the top NFL team? Well, yeah. I mean, I think I mean, why not? I, I honestly had I, I honestly have wished my entire life that they would do this uh every year. I think it would be cool. And it was over oh, the Canadian team would be destroyed. Maybe they would. It's part of the fun of it, though. But if you think that the absolute best Canadian team would be absolutely destroyed every single year, you're nuts. Yeah, uh, the yeah, CFL is not made up of a bunch of nobodies. <clears throat> um, right. That would be like saying that you automatically could take the best AHL team and have them play an NHL team and lose every single time. They wouldn't. They'll probably right. lose most of the time, but they wouldn't lose every time. But I would think it would be kind of cool to see it done differently every year. Um, one year it'd be in the States under American rules. Next year it'd be in Canada under Canadian rules and so on. You know, yeah, it'd be interesting for sure. Yeah. I mean, why not? I, I mean, they could make it a shorter game if they're concerned that it would be that bad. I just think it would be interesting because it would put more eyes on good Canadian players. Some of them being American, by the way, that play in the CFL. Um, oh, yeah. and yeah. more scouts would see these guys and be and think think twice about it. Um, at the same time, it would also give the, the opportunity for for more uh American players who would want to be involved and, and and see it come check out the game, watch on TV, and and see CFL and go, you know what? Maybe that's not a bad idea after college. Maybe I'll do a couple of years in the CFL. Guys well, who you rank really low. I mean, keeping in mind. There are so many American football players in the state. In Texas alone, in football territory, there are so many American football players that you have to think 98% of them are never going to ever set foot on an NFL stadium unless there's a party going on and they're invited. You know? Right. Um, so for some of those guys, they, the college is the only thing they really have. But a lot of those guys are good enough that they could make it if they had a shot. They need another venue to grow more, to get better. So for some guys that 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 went through the CFL, and there are a lot of guys who went through the CFL before they went through the NFL, and then they were successful. Do you remember, do you remember Warren Moon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Warren Moon cut his teeth where? Uh, after college, yeah. in the CFL, yeah. one of the greatest CFL uh, uh, quarterbacks. Uh, he totally eclipsed by guys that came after him, but <laughs> but nonetheless. Uh, he was one of the greatest, uh, and and then he went down there, and of course he was good. Uh, I thought uh, Fl Fl Doug Flutie played down there too, did he? Did he not? He did. Yeah, right? so did Kurt Warner. Now you know the Kurt Warner story. I don't. Oh, you should. You need to go. You need to look that up. Uh, Kurt Warner. Um, yeah, there's a movie about him, and it's actually really, really interesting. So we don't really have time to get deep into it right now, but uh, go go check him out. Y'all, I'll, I'll, I'll check that out. But I, I, you know what? As long as you bring that up, then I'll bring up Bud Grant. Who, who was a player and eventually a player coach for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. I think it was early 60s, I want to say. I, I'd have to look that up. Um, he decided to move on um, after being very successful and taking them to a few great cups as a player and coach. Uh, uh, he then moved on uh, to, to, uh, to the U.S. And uh, God help me, I can't remember which team, but he did end up getting them to the Super Bowl. 
So <laughs> even in coaching, sometimes going through the CFL is not like, oh, they're just a bunch of nobodies. Uh, I think yeah. this, the NFL should be considering the CFL as a place where guys can go get reconditioned. Guys can be up and coming if they can't play. They should be actually calling up CFL scouts and saying, hey, listen, we got a guy. We don't have room for him. But I know this guy's going to be great in two or three years, but maybe he'll work for you. Could you could you bring him into training camp? Yeah. They bring him in and they're like, yeah, this guy's really good. And in two or three years after winning a couple of great cups, he gets an opportunity to play down for the Dolphins and ends up with a Super Bowl. Probably shouldn't have used the Dolphins as an example when I said that. But <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, after spending three years in uh, Canada, he probably wants to go down to Florida to get some more. So, <laughs> oh yeah, wait, what are you talking about? We play yeah. in the summer, dude. It's hot. It was a joke about North and South. Yeah, but that one didn't work. We play in the summer. <laughs> no, that one doesn't work. We, we play in the summer. But All of our stadiums there, yeah. are open stadiums, man. Anyway. And it's not just because we don't have money. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, you know what? Okay, so I'll leave this with this. Anybody watching this, if you're a CFL, I mean, an NFL fan, and you've never ever wanted to watch CFL, and uh, you're like, oh, it's just a Bush League, watch a game. Um, do you be surprised how exciting and absolutely awesome it is? It's like people watching the PWHA, it's not PWHL, the Professional Women's Ice Hockey League. Is that what it's called? Um, people think, oh, it's, it's women playing, it's not going to be good as NHL. Well, first of all, it's not NHL. <laughs> uh, second of all, it's absolutely some fantastic. Good ice hockey players. There are some fantastic hockey players yeah. in that league. Look, just they look have at the great National games, teams. and they're very successful right now. Yeah. I mean, the two biggest crowds in the history of women's hockey were played in Toronto and Montreal. Just because they said we want to have a bigger crowd, so we're going to open up the entire yeah. arena instead of having to play a small one. And then Montreal yeah. went, "We can do that too." And the crowds come; they'll come every time. Right, eighteen thousand people, nineteen thousand people. You don't think they want to see windfall? I get and get this too. Next Olympics, uh, watch how many people show up to watch both men's and women's hockey. Uh, and when when that stuff is played, when they have women's world championships in Canada or United States, they fill the stadiums or the arenas. Right. Yeah. It's like you know, like well, then again, we do have the two best teams in the world, so of course we do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, listen, we are running out of time, so we're going to have to wrap this up. But, okay. Um, so, yeah, go Preds. I'm really sorry about the Jets. I truly mean it. I was kind of hoping to meet them, uh, us two, to fight it. Uh, out yeah, rematch. Title, but um, there oh, is next, next year. year. <laughs> no. So, I am Robert from the U.S., and we Gold have Lionel from Toronto. Talking us out. We'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.